So for those of you who don't know, my name is Richard Saunders. I'm a committee member of Australian Skeptics. We have a, quite, a, quite a collection of committee members here tonight. I lost in the crowd. There's uh, Jessica Singer down the back there waving at us at the moment. She's a committee member. We have... Yes, Margaret. She's a com Hello, Margaret. Another committee member. We have Luke. Luke down the front. Uh, we've got... Um, what's your name again? Paul. Paula. Paula. <laughs> Josh. 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 He, he's a funny guy. He, he does the audio for us. He, tonight he is. Anyway, Josh over there. Tim Mendham, the editor of The Skeptic magazine. Woohoo! More of that, about that in a moment. And our president, Iran Segev. Iran! Hiding around the committee. Any other committee members I forgot? I'm sorry? No? That looks like it. But speaking of Tim Mendham, folks, he's the editor of The Skeptic magazine. If you're not a subscriber, if you're new here, uh, first time Skeptics in the Pub member, The Skeptic magazine is the second oldest skeptical journal in the world. It's well over 30 years old. It's uh, a quality journal, I assure you, because I write for it. I wouldn't write for a rubbish journal. Is that right? <laughs> That's right. You can trust him on that one. Uh, if you want to subscribe, it's, it's, the price hasn't changed in decades, I don't think. Yeah, long time. Yeah, long time. You can subscribe online and you'll get a nice magazine in the post. You can read anywhere. Or if you wish, if you wish, for half price, you can get the digital copy. You read it on your device, your iPad, or whatever, or your computer. But if you uh, subscribe and get the physical copy, you get both. So you can enjoy the physical copy or the digital copy. So I can certainly recommend that, skeptics.com.au, or have a chat to Tim. And he's also always on the lookout for contributions. If you fancy yourself as a budding writer for a magazine, see Tim Mendham. Uh, lots of people surprise themselves and end up being published in the Skeptic magazine. It's great. And I must also point out, folks, on a similar theme, we've got some reporters from the Skeptic Zone podcast here. We have Maynard. Big hand for Maynard. Maynard will be going around a bit later on asking you questions for the Skeptic Zone podcast. So uh, you can be part of the Skeptic Zone podcast. And Joe Alabaster, folks, down the front here. And Joe Alabaster is a great example of somebody who didn't even consider writing for a magazine but ended up writing for the Skeptic magazine and being published. So it could happen to you. And the rewards are just... Fame and fortune. <laughs> Fame, at least. Really? Life. Oh. <laughs> Fame, life. Fame, life. Uh, now... Uh, I hope to see some of you at least in Brisbane next week. We have the Australian Skeptics Annual Whoa. Convention. Uh, the Skeptics Annual will be there. Most of the committee members of it uh, will be there, I think. Looking forward to that. Susan Gerber, our guest speaker, will be speaking at the convention along with a host of other prominent skeptics. I'm being heckled by, by my own reporters. I'm so that. You're speaking. All right, Joe Alabaster speaking. Maynard will be there. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun, folks. We're looking forward to the uh, convention. Great. I'm sure you are too, Sid. Uh, now, very important that I mention to you, this is a great time for you to meet Susan Gerbeck. Oh, I've got to turn on my video. <laughs> Don't say anything important yet. <laughs> oh, he hasn't. <laughs> Wish we've scared her off. <laughs> Come back, you're supposed to be speaking tonight. All right. Uh, enjoy Susan's talk tonight. But Susan's, uh, as you will discover, she's uh, an expert on how to edit Wikipedia. If you want to learn the ins and outs of editing Wikipedia and more skeptical adventures from Susan, we have a special Skeptics in the Pub on Sunday, this coming Sunday, from 1 p.m. at Stratton's Hotel, which is just in Castle Ray Street, less than a minute walk from this pub. So if you go down uh, here, you take the first right in the Castle Ray, there's Stratton's Hotel. One o'clock on Sunday, Please come along if you have a device, a laptop, or something, bring it along. Susan will be giving a, a lecture on how to edit Wikipedia. It's a fascinating uh, look into this amazing thing, which is Wikipedia. And by the end of it, you will know the ins and outs of Wikipedia and how to edit Wikipedia. We're hoping for a really big turnout. I'll be there, of course. Uh, Maynard Joe will be there. It'll be fascinating. We're looking forward to that immensely, Susan. But tonight, Susan's going to be uh, concentrating on, on other things, as you soon discover. So if you're not a, on our meetup 
uh, page. It's meetup.com slash AUST skeptics, spelled with a K, or just uh, look for Meetup Australian Skeptics or Sydney Skeptics, should find it. And uh, that's the best place to find out about our events via meetup or skeptics.com.au. So, that's enough from me at the moment. For those of the people who listen to the Skeptic Zone, I'm just going to run downstairs and have some chips. Oh, here they are. <laughs> I'll have these chips anyway. Let me introduce our guest speaker. I first met Susan, I think we were just discussing eight years ago when we were shipmates on... An, shipwrecked. Uh, we were shipwrecked, were we? You don't we, remember that? <laughs> we were shipwrecked. We were wrecked on a ship. We both took a cruise with James Randi uh, up the coast of Alaska, in fact, which was just a wonderful experience. It was so interesting. Uh, and we've known each other ever since. So we normally meet in conferences in the United States, I think. But we've been good friends ever since. Uh, we've always corresponded uh, with each other. And in recent years, of course, it's been fascinating to see how Susan has taken on this guerrilla skepticism. So without any further ado, my dear friends, may I introduce direct from the United States via Canberra and Melbourne and, and Tasmania and some other places. Launceston. And Launceston. <laughs> Susan Gerdick, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't he the sweetest? No. <laughs> okay. So, you guys ready? Yeah. This should be interesting. Let me turn. I I'll turn my thing on here in a minute. Well, wait, don't turn on yet. There's nothing to see. Okay, so tonight, my unconventional conventionalists, we're going to talk about something that I am not necessarily known for. You guys can hear me okay back there, right? Hello, back there. Hi, back there, people. Um, I am known for the Wikipedia project, Girl Skepticism on Wikipedia. In fact, I am um, known for it in the paranormal community. Uh, several of my detractors are people you might have heard of, uh, Rupert Sheldrick and Deepak Chopra. Hey! <laughs> That's pretty awesome. They have, they have a website of the 10 worst uh, skeptics, materialistic skeptics, they call us. I'm on the top 10 list. Right there Woo! with... Uh, right there with uh, um, some other people you might have heard of, Paul Kurtz, Martin Garner, uh, Richard Dawkins, you know, just a few people you might have heard of. But anyway, I'm, <laughs> I'm notorious for doing something that I didn't do. So in their mind, I did something that I, anyway. So I'm, I didn't do it, but it's just that I had this aggressive name, this gorilla skeptic thing. It sounds so frightening to people. So anyway, on Sunday, you must come and listen to the lecture I'm going to do. I am more than happy to be here and talk to you even tonight late, because my hotel room's right across the way. I brought my laptop. We can talk and talk and talk about things that I've done. But tonight, I'm going to be talking about something that is really a passion to me. It started way before Wikipedia was. Now, everybody here in this room has some kind of thing that interests them, something that excites them, something that if you were in a group of people and you said to yourself, oh my gosh, I can't really speak up in this room because, you know, I kind of don't know these people and, you know, I don't want to interrupt the professor or whatever. You're kind of sitting on your hands. And then they mention some topic and you go, oh no. I cannot let this pass. And your hand shoots up in the air and you feel your blood pressure ri rise in your face and you, you just feel like, oh my God. I'm gonna... And some people it's uh, medical quackery, like homeopathy or some kind of you know medical thing. Some people it's UFOs. They get really upset about UFOs and people who say that they're hypnotizing people and, and they have experiences. Some people it's more like creationism. Oh my gosh. Prayer and healing, that's another one that really gets me. But I have a favorite topic, and I've had this for many, many years. I don't know if anybody here has ever heard of Sylvia Brown. <laughs> oh, Sylvia <laughs> Brown. So Sylvia Brown. Don't you I, mean Sylvia Brown? Sylvia Brown, yes. I married the other guy. So uh, Sylvia Brown and I have a long history. Of course, I was nobody. I mean, I was just somebody who sat in the crowd. When Richard Saunders met me in, uh, in Alaska, I was almost my first conference, almost my first anything. I barely even talked to him. He says he knows me from there, but you know. <laughs> now, now he wants to know me. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Now we're friends. No, um, 
anyway, it was back before Facebook. And you know, when we when you didn't have the communication with people. Now I I I used to get really sad when I'd leave somebody that you meet at a conference or something. You'd be like, oh God, that's really sad. Now it's like, oh, it's sad. I'll see you later on Facebook in half an hour. You know, you just don't. It, you, the connections we're able to make with Facebook are incredible. So my story tonight is going to be about Facebook a bit. Does anybody here have Facebook? Anybody's ever heard of it? Uh, and, what? What? Uh, face, uh, FaceTime. No. Anybody not on Facebook? Okay. All right. But you know what it is, right? Okay. So fantastic, because this is going to be a test on this a little bit later. So my passion is Greek vampires. I hate Greek vampires. Greek vampires make my blood boil. Just the thought of these people. Now, I'm not talking about the normal psychics that come to the fair and they read your palm and they and everybody has a good laugh and you talk about, you know, if you're going to have a baby boy or a baby girl or whatever. I'm not talking about them. I'm not even talking about the mom and pops that are down at the street corners that are doing the tarot reading and things like that for you. I'm not talking about them. That's a different subject. I'm talking about the ones that chase after people uh, trying to get their... Uh, their uh, child has been abducted, or uh, their um, their uh, you know family member has recently died, and they're going to contact them. Those are grief vampires. Those are the people kind of latch onto you like some kind of latching on thing that just latches on you and it just like sucks the blood out of you like a vampire bat or something I don't know what do you have over here leeches leeches like a leech mm, just think of those leeches so <laughs> I'm thinking of those kind of people now some of them honestly believe that what they're doing is for the best they really do believe they're counseling people maybe they do have visions Maybe they really do get an impression that they think the, the body will be found by a body of water or the lake or something like that. Maybe they do. I'm sorry to let you know, but you know, you're wasting police time. You're, you're really putting these people through hell. You are ready, these people already feel awful because their child is gone. Their family member has just recently died. Just horrible things are happening to them and they're at their most vulnerable state. These people walk in the door and say, I can find him for you. I can take care of that. I can communicate with him after death because I'm psychic. And that really pisses me off. It really pisses me off. Don't piss me off. <laughs> I'll come and get you. So Sylvia Brown and friends, and friends, I've had a little bit of work with. Now before I can even mention what I've been doing, I have to introduce somebody to you who's not here. This is this is Mark Edward. Anybody here heard of Mark Edward, please? Okay. Mark Edward is the expert on psychics. He is the expert on psychics because he worked as a psychic for years and wrote a book about him. So Mark Edward is, let's see if I push the right slide. Okay, here we go. Woo! There's one. Okay, now we gotta turn that on. Okay, this is Mark. Oh, there he is. Uh, this is Mark Edward. This is, I must add, my boyfriend, okay? But I would say the same thing about anybody amazing. In fact, on the lecture circuit I've been doing all through Australia, I haven't been talking about this. I've been talking about Wikipedia. I have been really, really talking very strongly about some of my uh, other people who I really, really admire as experts, Ben Radford, uh, Joe Nickel, and um, uh, Brian Dunning. I've been talking about them a lot, and they're not my boyfriends. So I have no problem, you know. Well, he's hotter. Yeah, he's hotter. He is hot. I took this picture of him, too, way before. Oh. You know, so. And if you'll notice, there's a third hand right here. Because he is a magician. Oh. So, and he worked as a psychic for many years. This is his book, Psychic Blues, because he lived to tell the story of what is going on in the business of the psychic industry. He became one of the top psychics in the world. He was also working for Michael Shermer at the same time. He was on the staff of uh, Skeptic Magazine. So he worked on it for many, many years, and like double I said. Double agent. He, hmm? Double agent. Yeah, double agent, double, double, double agent. So he was a double agent, he was an agent. So anyway, his forward is by James Randi. Uh, they're good friends. And um, I cannot even begin my lecture without mentioning just a few quick things about Mark Edward because he is the expert on psychics and I have learned so much from him and others, but um, Mark Edward has done many, many things and you can find him on Wikipedia. I'm going to put up a lot of slides with some words on them. Don't read them because I know you guys are going to be like trying to read what's on the slide. It is not important. 
you just all you need to know is that you could go and find more information about somebody like this on Wikipedia. Um, and it talks more about his history and his, his honest things. So a lot of the citations are there. So this is something, Richard, are you in this picture by any chance? I don't see you right there. This is Tam, 2012. Anybody there? Is anybody there at this one? Uh, I'm behind the horse's ass, I think. As long as you're not the horse's ass. So this is Tam. This is me back when I had black hair. There's my son. There's Mark Edward. There's G uh, Ben Radford, Sheldon, Bob Blaskowitz. He's the expert on Brzezinski. Um, a lot of great friends. Here's James Randy. I'm sure you've heard of him. Um, a lot of people I don't know. But this is Tam 2012. Silk, Mark Edward is an activist. He's from the 60s. He says, we're going to go out and do something. We don't, we don't sit around in the 60s. You got out and you got, you got in there and did things. So Sylvia Brown had the nerve to do a show in Vegas while we were there. I mean, she's psychic. What was she thinking, you know? <laughs> so anyway, he was pissed off. When he found out he was writing to the sheriff, what are we doing? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And they're like, well, we don't know if we have any time to do anything. Mark's like, oh, we're going to do something about some of your brown. So Ben Radford had the sign had made. He'd been using it to, uh, you know, to protest Sylvia Brown a little bit. She is a convicted felon. Check her Wikipedia page. Oh. We have court documents up there. She is a convicted felon. She's dead, by the way. So we can say libelous things about her now. But um, so we met at the horse's ass. This is where everybody hung out. At, well, we didn't hang out there. But if anybody's going to meet anybody anywhere in town, you say meet at the horse's ass. And we went out there, and so we had the sign. And then Mark Edward uh, arranged for us to, in cabs or who knows what, about 12 of us went down and we went outside of her, her venue and we did um, like a, a mini protest and we have a video, it's all on the YouTube and um, you can look it up, it's Sylvia Brown protest or something like that. But anyway, that was a lot of fun. The reason why I really wanna mention that is because when you're gonna do a psychic protest or you're gonna do something that deals with any kind of activism, you need to have goals in mind. You need to first figure out what is my audience? Why am I doing this? Why am I wasting my Saturday afternoon or my Sunday afternoon to do this? You got to have some goals. And then you need to have when is well, you got to have some an audience. And then you have to decide what are my goals? How will I know when I'm done and and some kind of measurable effect, right? So what we decided, and this is kind of all learned from Mark Edward what we decided is the goal for this was not to get to the audience. We weren't going to convince anybody who was coming and going. It wasn't even to get to Sylvia Brown, which is extremely important. He says, go after the psychic. Nobody else in the audience has to know anything, but it's the, the psychic needs to know because they're entertainers. They're thrown off their game. If you, if you mess with them, like any magician or anybody else on stage, if you mess with them, not necessarily heckle them, but you get under their skin and they don't know what's going to happen. They're off their game, the performance is down, they come off abrasive, aggressive, the ratings go down, and people go, oh, well, I remember when she used to be nice. But anyway, so our audience, the reason why we did this is because we wanted to get people to be active. So we pulled together anybody who was, anybody who was around. And we went down to this thing, we did this thing, and people came back to me and said, that was the most fun I've had in years. Oh my God, i got to do this again. <laughs> that was so much fun. But they were shy about it. They didn't know how to go about doing stuff like this. They didn't know what to do. Mark had made these little flyers. There were, you know, four on a page. They were printed on bright green paper that had the most egregious things that Sylvia Brown had ever done. She had said some people were alive who were dead. She said some people who were dead were alive. Just horrible. Opal Joe Jennings. And he had just listed them on a piece of paper with nothing else on the paper. Cut it into fours. We took them into the bathrooms all over the venue where she was at. And then there's drunk people in Vegas. I don't know if you know this or not. <laughs> who, they, who know? So we were handing them out to the drunk people walking by. And we're asking them to take them into the venues where she was doing her thing. Because they could kind of get in. And so we'd like, hey, can you take these in and kind of put them in the bathrooms and just hand them out to people randomly? And they're like, hey, yeah, you're good. Okay, go for it. Huh? So they would take them. So they were handing them out. 
people get these little slips of paper and they don't know what they're about. They start Googling it, they get some information, and the people on stage don't know what to do. They don't, I mean, what are you gonna do? Say, hey, if you guys get a piece of green paper with names on them, just toss them. You know, they're, you know, just throw them away. Don't look at them. I mean, if you give any attention to it, it's gonna make people more curious. So anyway, so this is a protest we did that was just to get people excited about doing activism, to get over that shyness. And since then, I, I don't want to take total credit for this, or Mark doesn't want to take total credit for it, but Bob Laskowitz, I don't know if you know who he is, he's done some amazing things with um, uh, Brzezinski, the cancer quack. Oh, am I on the court that way? I guess I can say that. I think my documentation. Sheldon has done some amazing uh, things as well. Uh, ben Radford, obviously. Uh, my son, this is my son, Sterling, who's supposed to be here, but he's in college in America. It's his last semester, so he could not leave to come to Australia with me, even though he's just dying to be here. So please invite us back when my son's got his degree. Um, and uh, several other people have actually gone on to do other things, just amazing things. But I'm going to move on to the slide. The, so some more things that Mark Edward has done. This is him at Dragon Con, another amazing conference to go to. It's Everybody gets to dress up in comic <coughs> things and stuff like that. He's done a lot of stuff where he does um, um, cold reading in an audience or hot reads them, and then he reveals what he did and explains the tricks. <laughs> You're blocking it. Oh, well, there's nothing important there. It's just me. Just look at me. So this is, uh, you might also know him from Penn and Teller's uh, program, Bullshit. He was on the premiere show. Uh, it was called Speaking to the Dead. He did, exposed a medium called Rosemary Altea. Has anybody heard of Rosemary Altea? Yep. yep. Okay, well, you shouldn't because she's nobody now. <laughs> because he got in before she got uber famous. If somebody had done the same thing to Sylvia Brown, you wouldn't even know who she was. But because he and, you know, Penn and Teller were able to get in and do this, she was like nobody, you know, really quick because she was exposed. So here he is doing cold readings on um, bullshit. Here he is again. You might recognize him from there. Good. He's hired all the time to do different things. Here he is in ABC News. Um, here is the Long Island Media. Um, he was hired by Inside Edition, which is a major TV uh, program in America. They sent him to uh, Inside Edition, got him front row seats. They put little name tags. He had a little picture of his son who's alive. Um, he had it on his uh, lapel with his Kleenex, and he's crying in the front row, trying to make eye contact with her so she could do a reading for him. Unfortunately, he got the VIP pass, but he got up and he got to talk to her afterwards, and she looked at him and said, he was a kind soul, wasn't he? And he's like, yes, he is, you know, you know. But he didn't have to record it, but anyway. One of the things he noticed at this show, check it out. This is a big theater, you know, thousands of people in the audience. There, she's up on stage, right? You guys know who she is? Long Island medium, Teresa Caputo? Yeah. Uh, okay, well anyway, she's the big hot news in America right now. She has a big show called The Long Island Medium. And she's like the new generation of mediums. She's like attractive, she gets her hair done, you follow her to the salon, she talks to dead people everywhere she goes. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it who's had uh, somebody who's died? Who? Oh, is there some, is some male figure? He's trying to get a hold of me. You know, anyway. So she's, she's very girly. She has a reality TV show. And so what he noticed in the Inside Edition was, is that at the venue, they have all different sections all over the different uh, room, you know, thousands of people in the room. He, with the, he could see the camera crew moving to a section, putting their little boom thing out there, setting up the camera for a section of where there's people. And then, all of a sudden, she got a message from that same section. Oh. Somebody's trying to contact me. I think it's over here. And she'd go to where the cameras were already set up and the recording was, which proves that the camera crew is psychic, right? <laughs> so <laughs> how did that happen? Well, he wasn't able to do anything with it because they can't record in there to show that's what's happening. But if it had, if he could have shown the camera crew going to each area where she was setting up beforehand, you know she's got some kind of hot read going on in that section because she knew where to go. You know, kind of interesting, right? So that's Teresa Caputo. Here he is doing bending spoons. This is what uh, Richard is famous for. Mark Edward also bends spoons because he's a magician. 
Here he is, Jeff Probst. I don't know if you know who Jeff Probst. He used to do the show Survivor. You know where they go to the islands and stuff. Well, he uh, Jeff Probst dressed up as a psychic, and Mark was in his ear, had a little earpiece in the other room, and was doing psychic stuff. And then lastly, this is the last thing I'm going to mention with Mark Edwin. He, did, you're all going to after this is over, you need to Google Sylvia Brown pumped <laughs> because this video is on there, and you can see Mark. We went, I didn't go to this, but he went, this is 2009, he went to Hollywood where Sylvia Brand had like an audience of 10,000 people or something like that. And she's on the stage with Montel Williams, who's her pimpy, whatever guy, <laughs> who pumps, pimps her, whatever. So Mark got in line to get a question answered, whether he had a ticket or not, I don't know, but he, he's aggressive, he was gonna get this to happen. So he got up into the front of the thing. Oh, he'd also handed out the little flyers all over the bathrooms and everything too. So people had the little slips of paper with the people's names on it of the people that she, the worst cases that she has done, I mean the most egregious things she's done. So Mark gets up to the microphone, big tall microphone, and he stands there, you can see this on YouTube, he stands there. Have you seen Nightmare Alley or read the book? Oh my yeah, God, sure. you, you've got to do it. It's like, oh my God, amazing book, amazing movie. So Mark's back on his theater. So he gets up onto this thing and there's a microphone right here. And he goes, Sylvia, I'm getting visions. There's these names that keep coming to me. <laughs> Sylvia, I don't know what it is. It's just like, yeah, it's dead. And it's, it's, Oh, well, Joe Jennings! And you know, people in the audience are going, hey, you know, I saw these little papers of Uncle Joe Jennings. I know that's interesting. <laughs> oh, well, Joe Jennings and the Sago Fighters. And Sylvia, you can hear her. And Montel kind of, oh, uh, those are your, your uh, spirit guides. He's like, no, they're not my spirit guides. They're in my head. And they're pissed. They're pissed, Sylvia. They're pissed at you. They're pissed at you. And they're so angry. And she's like, no, no, that's the spirit guides. You know, you know. He's like, no, no, and he went as long as he possibly could until he felt like he was going to get taken away because she has big goons, you know, big security guards. So right before that happened, he dropped to the ground, taking the microphone stand with him and everything was boom. <laughs> and he laid there as long as he could to a count of like 10 or something. So he's like, <laughs> whatever. And then Montel says, oh, somebody will take care of that. Next question. <laughs> and he's, and he's, he waits until somebody says, I think we need to get an ambulance. And he goes, oh, it's coming out of it. So they take him off. And they drag him off, and the video shows him being taken off by the goons. So they take him the venue. Each, ha each venue has to have a, like a medic on staff and things like that, right? So he goes to the, he goes to the back. <laughs> And he's in the background. And then the other people who were with the sting who was recording this, they come walking in. Mark, Mark, did you take your meds this morning? Because you, uh, you look a little, uh, you know. And he's like, oh, I feel so much better now. So the goons went away. And he's left there with a medic. This is young woman. She's got a degree in medicine of some sort. I mean, she's a paramedic of some sort. I don't know what she's got. But even she should have some kind of scientific background. So she's like taking his blood pressure. And she's, you know, she goes, that's all normal. That's odd. And she wants him to fill out forms. So he's like, okay, all right, I gotta tell you, here's what the deal is, I'm, I'm fine, I just fainted just to get out of the situation, and blah, 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 and he explains it to her that she's a psychic, and that you're a big exposer because she's not really psychic. She's like, no way. <laughs> he's like, yes way, yeah, so we're gonna go. And she goes, okay, so she, he starts to leave, and she goes, wait, I have a question. Is my boyfriend gonna get a job next week? <laughs> and he's like, ugh, you can't win, you know, these people. He just explained it and she's thinking he's the psychic. <sighs> it's frustrating. Anyway, he's been hired for a lot of different things. He just came back from Norway to do a TV show over there. So, you guys ready to get to the sting that I did? Yes. Wait, what's the name of the video? Uh, Sylvia Brown Pumped. Okay. We have one person who's like, don't look now. Really good though, but make sure you watch it. Okay, so the ground pumped. Now I gave it away, you know. But he's got a lot of other things. You can actually just go to the Mark Edward Wikipedia page and just go through the citation. There's a whole lot. So here's where I come in. I learn from the best. I listen to the skeptic zone. So I know what's going on. I hate screen vampires. So what am I gonna do? I want to do my own sting. So why do? I like Facebook. Facebook's brilliant. I love it. So here's what I do. I put together a sting based on Facebook. People know what cold reading is, right? 
cold readings, just kind of random general statements you make about a person that you get feedback from the person and they acknowledge it and you say, yes, that's what I was thinking. Yes, I was just going to say that. Hot reading is when you know something about the person, you've done some research, and we know, based on just past experience, that a lot of these psychics have hot reading, um, ways of doing hot reading. Like Teresa Caputo, if you go buy a ticket on her website to go, you buy a ticket, it'll give you a little link that says, here, share this event with your Facebook friends. So now they have your Facebook profile. Once they have your Facebook profile, they can learn all about you, right? Whatever your cat's name is, you know, who, who's, you know, who you might have lost, um, family members. There's all kinds of things if your Facebook page is open enough that other people can look at it. So we know that. So we were like, okay, let's see if we can catch a psychic in a hot read. So again, Mark had done a, um, a lecture for a uh, reporter in the East Coast. I'm from California. And this reporter writes for the New York Times Magazine. Two million, two million subscription, okay? So he said, if you can get a hot read, we can do a, a story on it. He says, but I want to be there from the beginning. So I'm like, cool. So we put him into the Facebook group. I had a private Facebook group, about 50 people who just volunteered on Facebook, said, hey, I want to do something. Some of those same people that were in the uh, picture also were in there as well. People all over the world were in there. Um, and um, here, in um, Australia, we had uh, Amanda Duve. Duve, I'm saying her name right. She was really instrumental in a lot of the things that we did. She was very careful not to write in uh, Australian English. She was careful to post during times that you know America would be awake as well. So what we did is we created Facebook pages. I had some from ages ago from other ghost hunting stuff we'd done. We created Facebook pages that looked real that were not connected to anybody else except the other people in this group. We created them to look extremely real. We posted pictures of our food. We posted pictures of our cats. We, we posted, and we wanted to look like believers, but not like extreme believers. We wouldn't look like we're kind of, you know, we posted like quotes from Deepak Chopra and you know <laughs> Oprah Winfrey and just, you, you know, just kind of stuff like that. So we made these pages to look real. We did this for months. It was excruciating. It was hilarious because you're, you're conversing with people all over the world and you don't know. We're just talking about like, hey, cuz, you know, and you know, remember when we were growing up, we used to play Monopoly all the time. And oh, remember how you used to always take, you guys have different places. We had park places and stuff. You guys have some British things. <laughs> I don't know. I, I noticed that at McDonald's the other day. So, um, so we went and we created Facebook pages for months and we had them blocked. And by lock, that means that nobody can see them but us, right? Because we didn't want anybody to interfere. We wanted to have a history. So when we opened up the Facebook pages, we would be able to go and uh, look real. So then we picked, who are we going to pick? I picked, you know how you're on Facebook and everybody's like, oh, well, somebody should do something. Look, Chip Coffee's going to be here. John Edwards going to be here, blah, 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 blah. And everybody's looking at each other to do something. Well, I said, OK, all right, I'll take Chip Coffee. We'd had dealings with him before. So this is Chip Coffee. He's done um, some um, interesting, ooh. You're all supposed to go, ooh. Let me see Chip Coffee, OK? So Chip Coffee has, is what we call a grief vampire extraordinaire. He's been around a long time. He had uh, several shows. Uh, one of them was uh, Psychic Kids, where he tells kids that you're, you're those dead people, you, you're seeing dead people and you're actually psychic and those the noises you hear are actually you know, ghosts trying to communicate with you. I don't know, it's just to me it's child abuse, I'm sorry. But there's families that are like all into my son, psychic, Ooh, he sees dead people. So Jay Coffee was ripe, okay? He was ready, so we're going to try to we're going to try to sting him using Facebook. So what I did, we created these fake Facebook pages, and then we opened them up, tagging Chip Coffee as if we're going to go to his show because he had two shows in our area. One was in L.A. and one was up near where I live, which is San Jose area, which is six hour drive, it's, it's a long way, it's, it's 300 miles. So I went onto Facebook and I said, look, I don't want to pay for this myself, but we're going to do a psychic sting, I need some money. And I can't tell you what it's for until it's over. And I got 
nine hundred dollars in under twenty four hours. Because what happens is when people go to see these psychics, and I totally encourage you to go see psychics, you really should know what's going on and what's being said. You guys go to the fairs and all these things. I, I hear you guys on the skeptic zone all the time, and I'm right there with you. I'm like, yeah, your brother. But um, <laughs> You need to go and see what's going on and see. You will not be able to. It, it's amazing what's actually being said and done. It's, it's worse than you think. So anyway, we needed VIP tickets. And I got a VIP ticket here. Because what most skeptics do is they don't want to give money to the psychic. So if they even go, they sit in the back, the cheap seats. Nothing happens in the cheap seats. The chip coffee doesn't care about the people in the cheap sheet seats. Boba, so that's she sells seashells by the seashell. So he doesn't care about those people. He's out to make money. He wants the people in the front. The front are the fans. The front are the ones where those those are the people who are willing to pay the money. They know every show he's done. They can even rattle off the episode list. It's like like nerds or something, psychic nerds. These were $160 a piece, which in Australia is about $250. $200, okay, so we raised $900. I had enough money to send people to go to the one in uh, LA and people in San Jose. So we changed all the names of all the Facebook pages before we opened them up. We put up pictures for the people who actually were gonna go to the show, because like Amanda and other people in, in um, other parts of the United States and Australia couldn't go, obviously. So they had to take the page, we changed it over to be somebody else, then opened them up to the public, and we put in, you know, how we wanted to meet our family members and people we wanted to see, and you know, we had dead people who we wanted to get in contact with or advice, and you know, those kinds of things. We were just talking, but we didn't overdo it. We still put up pictures of our cats and cat videos and Deepak Chopra and all that other stuff. We still had to do that because we still had to look real. The hardest part was, is we had to time it that the, sh the stuff that was the most relevant to Chip that he needed to see was at the top of the feed. Because we didn't know if they would scroll way down and look far back you know, to find something. Because they only need a few good hot reads to make the show really good. So we put out as many as we could. We threw them out there. And so our hope was we would go to the show and he would have read our Facebook page because we tagged him. Do you get it? When you tag the event or you tag him, he gets a notification saying somebody's tagged you on Facebook. He clicks on the link and there he is on our Facebook profile. For those of you who don't know how Facebook necessarily works. It's like saying, uh, my life's an open book, please come and look at my page and learn all about me so that you can just repeat it in front of the audience as if you were just heard it from the spirit world, right? Okay, we're a scientific skeptics, right? So we have to have some science in here somewhere. My degree is in history. I'm a baby photographer. I don't know anything about this stuff, but I thought about it and I said, I'll ask my son, honey, how do we do this? And so he helped me come up with an idea. He's not here. I was just talking to someone. <laughs> first motor. You guys back there can't tell. There's nobody sitting in the chair. Oh, hi. How are you doing? Um, unless I'm channeling somebody. But anyway, so we decided to double blind it. This has never been done before that I know of. So here's how I did it. Once the people were at the venue, I'm in Salinas, California, which is 300 miles away from the people in LA on a Tuesday. They check in to the event. They go inside, they text me, and they say, I'm here, I'm in place. And then I say, okay, so I change their Facebook profile, change the password and change the profile name and everything. And then I put up a bit of information that they at the venue didn't even know. And I tagged Chip Coffee's uh, event. And they were good stuff. I think I came up with some stuff. Like one person I said, Oh, we're in the Biltmore Hotel. This is amazing. I haven't been here since I was a child. First, I had to look at Wikipedia and make sure it existed when I was a child. Um, wow, I haven't been here since a child. I feel really short. I mean, I feel very tall being in this building and stuff like that. Tagging Chip Coffee and the venue. So if Chip Coffee had said in his little spiel, you know, that he was getting somebody in the audience who had been to the Biltmore Hotel when they were a child on a field trip, there's only one way he would have known that, and that's if he had gone to the Facebook page, or one of his minions had gone to the Facebook page for that person and got that information there. Because my person who was there didn't even know. 
So that's how we blinded it. And we did this for everybody there. There was only like five people there. So we did different things. Like one of them said that she was late because she was walking her dog, and her dog's name is this, and blah, blah, blah. And then another person, we said that they'd lost their keys, and they couldn't find their keys, and good thing their next door neighbor had upstairs. And it was, you know, genuine kind of stuff. It wasn't anything that was too weird, you know. It was all kind of stuff that somebody could say. But it was obscure enough that if Chip Coffee had said it, we would have known. So here's what happened. Nothing really. The people, my people didn't really get called on. They were able to get a lot of information. They understood that his vision isn't so good. So the people who get in the front, obviously, are the ones who are going to get the call on. They're also the people who are more likely to have the money and to be the fans, not to be skeptics. Because what skeptic's going to pay, you know, a good chunk of money to go there and spend their afternoon there? So they were able to get a lot of information. They also got to take a picture with them. I will show you. This is freaky. Don't freak. <laughs> Make, I'm waiting until your stomach settles too. So that happened. Two days later, Susan and two other people go to the San Jose one. I have to go in there. I've just spent $900 of strangers' money. I am really worried that nothing's going to happen. And I was just kind of like, OK, this is going to happen, or else. So I went in wearing bright colors. I had my, you know, I had just, I looked as wooey as I could without saying the word woo. And I had Sheldon, who was on my right hand side, and he's um, from Sacramento, uh, very skeptics. And then on the left hand side was a young, uh, was not young, uh, she's one of my friends from my group in Monterey County. She'd never done anything remotely like this at all. Um, she's a psychiatrist. So, um, and Sheldon's a professor at the university in um, Maloney College. Anyway, so he's a, he's a psychology professor, by the way. So we come into the venue acting as if we know each other for years, hugging each other. They just met for that time. And we do this friendly thing. Um, you know, we're sitting, we got three rows back because the real fans had the reserve seats in the front. So we're sitting there. And we're hugging on people, and we've got our Kleenex at our eye, and we're just so positive, and we make friends with all the people in the audience around, and who do you want to hear from? Oh, I want to hear from this and that. So mine was my son, Matthew, who's three years old. He died when he was three years old. I don't have a son named Matthew, and the sons I have are still alive. But poor Matthew, he died when he was three years old. It was just horrible. And um, Sheldon wanted to hear from his mother, who had passed away. She was still alive. And Jan was running, she just got assigned to a Facebook page. Somebody had created an account with a person named, uh, who was looking for her sister, Linda, who had died in the World Trade Center. Tower two. So I'm like, really, you created one for the World Trade Center? And she goes, I said, you're, you're gonna be the World Trade Center girl. She's like, okay. So we got in there, and we were telling everybody around us about the World Trade Center and about Matthew and about, you know, because we're telling people, like, I went up and went to the bathroom probably five times, and I'm standing in line with the people. Oh, this is wonderful. I'm so excited. Have you ever been to one of Chip Coffee's shows before? Oh, my gosh. I, he's gonna, I, I just feel, I feel like he's going to be able to contact my son, Matthew, who died when he was three. Oh, my gosh. I feel so good about this. Get out of line, go back in a few minutes later, start talking to the next group of people, because you don't know if there's plans. You don't know what's going on. So you're just friendly, 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 friendly. We get in, we're sitting there, three rows back. Chip Coffee does his little thing about, you know, all the show he's been on and his QA, and people are like, oh Chip, remember when you were in episode 15 and whenever you met? And you're like, I'm like, <laughs> You know, laughing and nodding my head, feeling <laughs> nauseous, you know. So um, finally, it's going to be the reading time. He's like, do not raise your hand. Just sit there quietly because I need to be able to contact the spirits. I, I can't, I have to have no sudden movements and all that. And we're like, okay, fine. So he says, so we're going to take a quick break. He's going to go do something, I guess, in the back. I was thinking, he's going to be on Facebook pages. Oh my God, he's going to be on Facebook pages. It's awesome. Because remember, ours are also locked down. Somebody sitting at a bar several blocks away is, is logged onto our accounts. He has all our passwords. His name is Jay Diamond. 
He's got our passwords and he's going in and doing the same thing I had done for the LA group by putting some kind of bit of information. So we had to agree to anything that we heard because we didn't know if Chip would is reading the Facebook pages and was going to give us some kind of information that was on the Facebook page because we don't know what it is, right? So what happened is <clears throat> Chip comes around and they start handing the microphone and he went to somebody who was obviously somebody he talked to beforehand and kind of was obvious. Went to somebody else talking about their, their how they're pregnant and they're going to have twins and I don't know, some stuff like that. <clears throat> now I am desperate at this point because like I said, I've taken $900, that's a lot of money to me for people I do not know and I really feel pressure. <clears throat> so Sheldon and uh, Jan and I are sitting there and um, Ch uh, Chip, uh, Chip mentions 9-11. Um, and I reach over to my friend and I'm like, we're just like crying, like, oh my gosh. And the people in the front of us turn around and go to their friends, they're like, her sister died in 9-11, Tower 2. And they're like, yes. And Chip's right there. He's as close to me as probably this little wall is right under me. Something like that. Not too far. And we're not quiet, so we're, we're, we're making sure we're heard. So before that, I went to his manager. We figured out which one his manager is. And I go up to his manager. I say, oh my gosh, I feel so... I just can't imagine the, the emotion I have. Oh, but Chip does readings, right? I mean, I could get a live reading with him, right? I know he can't read me here today completely. I know that's, that he, I can't expect that he's going to be able to reach my dear son, Matthew, who died when he was three. I know he's not going to be able to do that, right? And I was like, yeah, he's not going to have time for that. Like, but I can get a reading from him later, right? I mean, I know he's probably got a long queue of people that, but I could pay extra, right, to get in a little ahead of everybody else and maybe get a reading from him. And he's like, Oh yes, no problem. He's like, ching, 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 ching. <laughs> we got a hack, we got a hack. So he tells, he tells the, he tells the, uh, he tells them. And then I said, you know what? Here's the thing. I'm really worried that I'm not going to be able to get in contact with my Matthew because he was only three, and he wasn't really speaking at the time. And I'm really worried that he's not going to be able to get in contact with my baby. I mean, what if he can't get in contact with him? He couldn't really speak. And the guy said, don't worry, I've seen Chip reach stillborn babies. <laughs> Whoa. I'm like, okay, wonderful. <laughs> so my stomach's turning at this point. And I go and sit down. And then that's when Chip comes out and he starts doing the thing. I haven't mentioned that. Because we're sitting there quietly trying to make sure that we don't wave our hands or anything like that. But Chip goes, I'm getting an older woman with a child, <laughs> we're on it like the honey badger, you know? <laughs> Sheldon and I are like, boom, oh, 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 oh. and the people around us are going, oh, back off, that's theirs. He's, he's obviously in touch with the people behind us because that's theirs. And we're like, we're, this is ours, we're taking it. So, you know, you can see us how agitated we are. So um, we, we said, Fine, we're gonna take this. So Chip comes in and he starts telling me, telling me I got only a few minutes, so I gotta run this up. So anyway, it's all over. No, I'm kidding. So um, so he comes to he comes to Sheldon, he describes this mother figure who is nothing like his mother, who is still alive, by the way. She's dabbing at his eyes, I'm dabbing in my eyes, we're just like, you know. This is a trip, trick that my Mark Edward taught us. When you're a psychic or when you're trying to do it, you know, you're doing psychic things. The Kleenex box is under the table. When they're ready for you to cry, they pull out the box of Kleenex and tears come out. It's like on cue, they're, they're, they got it. So I saw the guy with his microphone and he's, and I'm, he's walking along and there comes the box of Kleenex. I was like, man, this couldn't be any better. It just was like picture perfect what Mark said to expect. So here comes the box of Kleenex. I believe the Kleenex. And Chip says, I'm getting a little boy who's feet are moving really fast. I mean, who, how many people will have little boys that don't run around like crazy? So he says, I'm getting a little boy who's running around. I said, oh my God, he was hit by a car. And the audience goes, whoa. And he goes, oh, like that. And then he says, okay. I said, oh my gosh, you're in contact with him. And he's like, yes. And he, so he, he says, 
I had restless leg syndrome. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, I don't know what's on my Facebook page, so I just read anything he said. Then he goes to, then he goes, 9-11. As if we hadn't been talking about it for like the last hour, right? <laughs> so I go, to Jan. <gasps> Like, in other words, it's your turn, right? <laughs> so he found her dead sister, Linda, and he said their favorite Beatles song she loved, and he said, he said she was in the tower, and it hurt, <laughs> but only for a moment. Oh, <laughs> He's laughing. He's laughing over here. <laughs> then there's a woman behind us who's bawling her eyes out, young woman, 20-something, and with her mother. And he says, I'm getting a young man for you. And she's like, yes, you know. And he says, well, young could be anything younger than him. You know, if you get a default. He says, was he tall? She says, he wishes he was. <laughs> <laughs> she wished he was. And he goes, well, he's appearing tall to me. <laughs> Did he have dark hair? She says, yes. Because he he's standing in the back of the room right now watching you. And everybody's looks in the back. There's nobody in the back of the room, but you know, obviously, he's like, and he's been trying to get in touch with you. Every time your phone makes that noise or your TV screen wiggle wobbles, that's him trying to get a hold of you. And he says, did he die <coughs> by illness, suicide, or violence? <laughs> well, you know, he's psychic. He should know, right? <laughs> What's that leave? Ac uh, accident's the only thing left. So she said no to the other three. So it had to be an accident. Young man, an accident. It's not snowing, so it can't be a, you know, it's probably a car accident. Car accident. Yes! He said, I'm not gonna be able to get a hold of him. Oh, she, he says, how long has he been dead? She doesn't know. <laughs> Five days. She bought a VIP pass, pass with her and her mother to come see. The guy has just been buried, right? It's disgusting. And then he says to her, live young, die fast, leave a beautiful corpse. <laughs> I mean, who says that to somebody who's kind of, their fiance has just died, you know? And she's like, oh, she's bawling. And then he says to her, I, I can't really get a hold of him because he hasn't passed over enough. I, contact me in a few months and we'll do a private meeting. Oh my God. And you know she's gonna do it too, right? So what happened is, I said, I'm out of here. I feel so sick to my stomach. I said, we're not going to stay for the ghost hunting part of this, because they had a ghost hunting part. I'm like, I don't care. We're out of here. He read all three of us. Let's get out of here and see the results. But we have to get our picture taken with him first, because I want my picture taken with him. You know? <laughs> I paid my money. I want my picture. So I want a new profile picture for Facebook. Facebook, me and Chip Coffee hanging out. You know. So what ends up happening is we get back, we get our pictures taken with him, we get back to the venue where we, the bar where our friend has the, um, uh, the passwords to get back in. Turns out, nothing. He only cold read us the whole time. He did not look at our Facebook page. We did not get a hot read. So the editor who was going to do, the man, the journalist who was going to do this, his editor was not interested. So we were able to prove that he's cold reading us. And the only other thing that we had on it was that I told his, his, his uh, manager that I was really worried about my son not coming through. And then I forgot to tell you that on the stage he says, you know, you're really worried that your son's not gonna come through. But I didn't have audio of me telling the manager that. So I have no evidence that he was kind of like, you know, getting the information from his manager. And it was kind of a very, you know, kind of a thing. So anyway. I wrote an article for Skeptical and Farm Magazine. It's called Operation Bumblebee, because that's the name of the sting. It was called Operation Bumblebee. Yes, I know bumblebees do not have stings. <laughs> Stingers. I don't need to know that. Be careful when you look it up on the internet, because there is an Operation Bumblebee. It's a military exercise. I wasn't thinking when I named the pro project. But there is an article, you can, Operation Bumblebee, you will find it all over the place, especially if you look for Susan Gerbeck, it's on my Wikipedia page, it's also on Scuffle Choir magazine with all the detail of all this. I don't have time to tell you the last story, but you Google Operation Ice Cream Cone, <laughs> because we did another sting right after this, another one with a, uh, another psychic, and it was totally done different, but it was completely Facebook. 
And that's really interesting, really, really fascinating what we do with that. Operation Ice Cream Cone. So Chip Coffee, apparently he knows what's going on. He wrote a blog, he went on Facebook and talked about how evil, you know, Chip Coffee, Deepak Chopra, Chopra, Ruben Sheldrick, God, Susan's just this horrible person. Anyway, so I'm not showing you these slides because um, I know you'll sit here and read them. Um, but these are some of the Facebook posts. You'll find these on the internet. Boo! Guys, come on. Boo! Thank you. <laughs> so he did, he did a really smart thing, I think. He put up a blog post saying that he knew all along we were there and that we were, he knew that we were skeptics and he gave us fake readings because that's what we wanted. And if anybody ever comes to one of his shows again, he'll know right away that they're, they're skeptics and he's gonna give them a fake reading too. So he's got it now. I thought that was really brilliant. Obviously he's, he's had this before come up to him. So he wrote a blog about it. You can't leave comments on the blog, it's just open. Now we have secondary sources, so guess what? We can put it all up on his Wikipedia page because they're in Skeptical Inquirer magazine. Skeptical Inquirer magazine is a notable source, just like Skeptic. And, oops, ah, I'll take it with me, like, like Mark did. Skeptic magazine, this is notable, it's a journal. We can quote out of this for Wikipedia. So now, if you go to Chip Coffee, C-H-I-P-C-O-F-F-E-Y, you can look at his Wikipedia page and you can learn all about Operation Bumblebee. <laughs> and I mentioned on there. So here's the pictures, you guys ready? Here's Chip Coffee. There's Sheldon. Oh. This is the San Jose show, this is the second show. Look at his face, now watch, check it out. Here he is with uh, Jan, this is the one who had the sister who died in the World Trade Center. Here he is in LA with Heather Henderson. <laughs> This is two days before. It has exactly the same look on his face. He, he, he looks like a cat, doesn't he? You don't even need him there. He's just a cat. Why? Why is he always smiling the same way? I guess he's been doing this for a long time. You get that frozen look. He's got the perfected smile. He probably smiles at himself. Oh, he. Oh, in his blog post, he wrote that the money that we gave him, he bought a refrigerator with it. So I was planning on. <laughs> Sending him a picture of him and I so he can put it in his magnet so he can put it on his refrigerator. If I can get his address, I will. Heather Henderson and Emery Emery were instrumental in this. This is, Heather, this is Emery Emery. We have Heather and Emery have a podcast called Skeptically Yours and also Ardent Atheist. And then this is Emery holding a picture of his dead something. I don't know what he was trying to reach. Was nobody. This is Dan Godol. This is also LA. And there I am. Oh, Me and Chip. Oh, aren't we cute? There's my son. See the pictures I'm holding of my son? Poor Matthew. My son actually went to the event. He was sitting in the back as one of the witnesses. We had several witnesses there. Chip thought it was funny to hold my purse. Now, does this look like somebody who knew that we were skeptics and was playing along? So the more the photo gets out, the more it makes his credibility look bad, right? So. Anyway, so um, it's, we're really close to putting up this picture of Chip and I on Chip's Wikipedia page. Because now I'm notable enough to have a Wikipedia page because of Deepak Chopra and Ruben Sheldrick, who are notable. Their, their criticism of me gives me enough credibility to have my own Wikipedia page. It's crazy. It is freaking crazy out there. So Chip Coffee writing about me, all, who also has a Wikipedia page, also gives me enough credibility. So. That is basically my story. If you want to know more about Operation Bumblebee or Ice Cream Cone, please look it up on the internet. It's all over. And that would be it. Thank you, Susan Jones. If you can hang on to that for a second, uh, we've got time for just a couple of questions, I think, about your. Uh, I'll make something up. You make something up. That's what. I'll we have a, a question from the man right down the front. We were talking about Harry Houdini. Uh -huh. Did you read Houdini's books on exposing the tricks of the medium? Probably published in the 1920s. Oh, I've read a lot about Houdini. I mean, psychics are my can, can make that go. Away. Psychics are my favorite. So um, I've read a lot about Houdini and um, his exposing his methods. And Mark Edward is actually pretty much an expert on psychics, and he's read just about everything on Houdini. He does a Houdini seance all the time. He's really into, uh, he's, he's an expert on seances. He's done several for different TV shows. Um, one just recently on Ouija boards, and he showed how people can um, fool themselves when they can contact 
the Ouija board works whenever you can see, but when you put a blindfold on, uh, suddenly the Ouija board doesn't work. So that was done on a show called Brain Games. It just came out recently. It's a really, really good episode uh, to watch on the idiomotor effect. So yes, I've read quite a bit about exposing mediums, and it's very interesting. Love to be doing that more. Okay, well, folks, thank you very much. What an entertaining talk, Susan. I wish I could have been there for that. That sounds a lot of fun. I've, I've Let's go do it tomorrow. I have nothing more to do. Is that what we say? Mitchell Coombs. Mitchell Coombs. Yeah. We'll, talk, we'll talk Let's to you go. About, Let's go. Let's go. We'll talk to you about Mitchell Coombs later. Uh, Susan's going to be here for a little while yet, folks, if you want to come up and have a chat to her. Or, of course, you can see her on Sunday at the special Wikipedia uh, afternoon at Stratton's just around the corner at 1 p.m. Hope to see you there. It's a whole afternoon. Very very relaxed and very informative. I think we have a question from the president. Is there, is there at the Stratton's, is there Wi-Fi? There is Wi-Fi at the Stratton's. Oh. <laughs> I think they'll go there just for that. <laughs> so enjoy the rest of the evening, folks, and please come up and say hello to Susan. But for now, thank you very much, Susan Gouin. Yeah.